Hey everyone, Dr. Michael Nelson here, and today I'm so excited to tell you five tips to help ensure that you have the most successful cataract surgery. Good optometry morning. All right, so if you're new to our channel, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe below so you can get lots more videos just like this one. So you've been diagnosed with cataracts and now you're waiting for surgery. Your surgeon is gonna do everything they can to make sure you're gonna have a terrific outcome. So I want you to take charge and do a couple of things so that you can ensure that you have a great surgery as well. Tip number one, make sure you know which eye they are doing surgery on. Now this seems a little bit obvious, but you'd be surprised how many patients actually don't know which eye the surgeon is gonna do first. Cataracts often develop in both eyes, but they will develop asymmetrically, which means one eye will often be a little bit worse than the other one. And so when the surgeon does surgery, they will typically do surgery first on the eye that has the worst vision. Surgeons will often do surgery on one eye on one visit, and then a few weeks later, do surgery on the other eye. More and more, we're finding surgeons are choosing to do bilateral treatment, which means they will be doing surgery on both eyes on the same visit. So your job before you leave the cataract surgeon's consult is to know, is the surgeon gonna be doing a unilateral treatment or a bilateral treatment? And if it's a unilateral treatment, which eye are they going to be doing surgery on first? Okay. Tip number two, know if you have dry eye disease. Dry eye disease is an important consideration before you're having cataract surgery. And it's important because about 20% of the population over 65 will have dry eye disease, and it's even higher in women. So dry eye disease is a condition when your eyes don't produce as many tears or as good of quality of tears as they normally would. And so the bottom line is that dry eye disease will cause the cornea to dry out and it will start to damage the top epithelial cell layer on the cornea. All right, so there's three ways that dry eye disease can affect the results of your cataract surgery. So first of all, it'll affect the measurements that the surgeon is gonna do before the surgery. So before you have cataract surgery, the surgeon is gonna have you in to do some really, really precise measurements on the front curvature of your cornea. And this is gonna help the surgeon calculate what's the best power of the lens implant that they're gonna use for your surgery. And so if you have dry eye disease that is damaging the top epithelial cell layers, what that means is that when they do the test to measure the front curvature, they're not gonna get as reliable and consistent results as they would if you have a really healthy cornea. All right, the second way that dry eye disease can affect your results for cataract surgery is that you will have slower healing. So when the surgeon does cataract surgery, they will make an incision in the cornea, and if your cornea is already damaged due to dry eye disease, it's gonna heal slower than it normally would. And so the third way that dry eye disease will affect your surgery outcome is that you will actually get worse outcomes if you have dry eye disease. Dry eye will cause your eyes to be more blurry and more irritated, and so as a result, you won't reap the benefits of the cataract surgery as much as someone who doesn't have dry eye disease. So my recommendation is that you visit your referring optometrist many months before you have surgery so they can look and see if you have dry eye disease and then treat that dry eye disease. Many times dry eye disease requires months of treatment to get that cornea to be healthy again. Basically, the healthier your cornea is going into surgery, the better and faster the results will be and you will have less complications. Okay. Tip number three, clean your eyes. What is the one thing that scares your surgeon the most? Endophthalmitis. So what is endophthalmitis? Endophthalmitis is an infection that occurs inside the eye and it can result in vision loss. It's probably the worst complication that you can have during cataract surgery or any eye surgery, but fortunately it's relatively rare and it only affects about one in 1,000 people. But there are some things that you can do to help reduce that risk. And one of them is making sure that your eyes and your lids are clean before cataract surgery. So there is a condition called blepharitis, which is really, really common. Reports indicate that about 50% of people over 65 will have signs of blepharitis. So how does blepharitis relate 
to end ophthalmitis. Well, blepharitis is a very mild chronic lid infection. Basically, there's bacteria that live around our skin and on the surface of our body, and it's, they're supposed to be there to keep away worse bacteria and worse things. But there's a particular type of bacteria that lives around your lids and your lashes. And in some individuals, this bacteria just loves the environment that it's in whether the pH or the temperature or the chemistry around your particular lids is just perfect, sometimes this bacteria will produce and thrive more than it needs to. And when it does that, this bacteria will produce waste products or poop that collect around the lids and fall into the surface of the eye. And these waste products will cause inflammation and irritation to the surface of the eye. This can contribute to dry eye disease and it can also increase the amount of infections that some individuals can get. And studies show that individuals that have blepharitis are at a little bit higher risk for developing endophthalmitis. So when you are visiting your referring optometrist and asking them if you have dry eye disease, also ask them if you have blepharitis. And if you have blepharitis, they will give you some options to treat it and keep your eyelids clean so you can reduce the risk of endophthalmitis. Tip number four, Know what you want. And what I mean by this is know what you want your final prescription to be. So when the surgeon is doing cataract surgery, their primary objective is to take that cloudy lens, remove it, and replace it with a clear acrylic lens so you can see clearly again. So that's their first goal, and that's the primary thing that they're gonna to try to solve. And so there's a secondary objective in cataract surgery, and that is that it's actually a form of a refractive surgery. And what I mean by that is that the surgeon can change your prescription after cataract surgery. So when they take out that natural lens, that natural lens has a certain power in it and they have to put a new lens in and that new lens is gonna have a power in it and the surgeon has some leeway to choose what power they want that lens to be. What they can do is they can take your glasses prescription and incorporate that into that lens implant and change what prescription you're going to have after the surgery. So for example, if you're a minus four prescription, the surgeon could try to aim to make you a minus four after surgery, or they could choose to aim to try to make you have zero prescription, or they could choose to make you have a minus one or a plus one or whatever prescription you want to have. So the other thing that's important to know after cataract surgery is that lens that they're gonna put in, it won't have any autofocus ability. And so if you look at my playlist on presbyopia, what that will tell you is that lens doesn't have any ability to autofocus. And so after cataract surgery, you're not gonna have any ability to autofocus. And so you will often need something to do your autofocus, like a pair of reading glasses or something like that. And so keep in mind that the surgeon can aim to give you a certain prescription for the distance after the cataract surgery. Now, many people will choose to say, I want to not have any glasses for the distance so they can see great without glasses and then just have to use reading glasses after cataract surgery. However, there are some individuals that work up close all day long. Let's say you work on a computer all day long and you might choose to say, hey, you know what? I would like to see up close and see my computer without glasses all day long and I don't mind putting on a pair of glasses to help me drive, but I just don't want to put them on for reading. So you need to have that discussion probably with your optometrist and definitely with your surgeon so you're both on the same page to know what they're going to aim for. What's really important here though, choosing what prescription you're going to end up with is the secondary objective of the surgery. And so the surgeons are going to aim for that, but given that they're dealing with living human tissue, they cannot guarantee that you're gonna end up with a certain prescription. They're gonna aim for it, but there will be a little bit of leeway. But the key is for you to know what they're aiming for and what to expect coming out of cataract surgery. Okay. So tip number five, know if you have any other eye conditions that might affect the results of your cataract surgery. So many people develop cataracts later in their life, and often that means that they might be at higher risk for other eye conditions. And many other eye conditions will also have some effects on your results or the expectations to have after your cataract surgery. So if you have glaucoma and use eye drops, that can give you more dryness. If you have glaucoma and your pressure's up, sometimes they will do a combination procedure to try to lower your pressure. If you have an eye disease that affects the cornea, like keratoconus or Fuchs dystrophy, 
those can affect how the cornea heals and some of the measurements that the surgeon's gonna be doing. If you have uveitis or inflammation in your eyes, that might change how much inflammation that you develop after the surgery. If you have a retina problem, like retinal attachments or have had a scleral buckle or are at risk for that, that might put you a little bit higher risk for problems with the retina. If you have macular degeneration, it might mean that the macular degeneration is contributing to part of your vision loss. And so the cataract surgery might not improve it to 100%. And so you need to be aware of those expectations. Or if you have diabetes, what that means is that the leaking blood vessels at the back of the eye might cause your eyes to heal slower or you might develop more inflammation after the cataract surgery. So these are just a few conditions that can affect the results of your cataract surgery. So what you need to know is which conditions might affect the results of your cataract surgery and make sure your cataract surgeon knows which conditions you have now or have had in the past because that will help them in their decision making for your surgery. So those are five tips that you can ensure that you have the best outcome on your cataract surgery. And tip number six, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment if you've had cataract surgery or have questions about cataract surgery that's coming up. And with that, have a great optometry day.